Hamilton, excited to be here, excited to, to be a part of this uh, tra tradition-rich franchise, and um, we're looking forward to doing all the things that Coach talked about, you know, with regards to, um, you know, being a competitive team that can go out and have a chance to win each Sunday. And um, offensively, we're going to be a, a physical team. Um, to say that we're going to be a run first team is uh, probably not the appropriate thing to say, but I will say that we're going to work like heck to establish the run game, but we're ultimately going to do whatever it takes to uh, feature our playmakers. And um, we consider offense alignment to be playmakers as well. So it'll be um, exciting to watch, um, you know, watch our guys go out and compete every Sunday, but we have a long way to go. I guess the good news right now is um, we're undefeated and tied for first place. <laughs> and so, um, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, to having a great season. Pep, can you explain um, there's no offensive coordinator title on, on this on Hugh's staff, and he says he's going to call the plays. So how do you integrate into that system, then, and, and what are your responsibilities? Well, we have a, a veteran offensive staff, you know, myself and uh, Coach Saunders, Coach Seaman, Kirby Wilson, Hal Hunter. Um, we, we have guys that, you know, they have a, a ton of expertise in a lot of different areas, and I think we'll ultimately collaborate our thoughts uh, in an effort to support Coach and what, whatever strategies he come up, come up with on a week-to-week -week basis. So uh, my job is really, you know, just to facilitate uh, what it is that Coach wants to do and, and to make sure that um, uh, we organize things in a way that we can uh, implement it to our players and go out and have a chance to be successful on Sundays. Did you um, talk about what happened in Indianapolis and whether that left you at all bitter the way it all went down? Well, um, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, it's fortunate, you know, as a, a coach in, this, in the National Football League to be in a situation where uh, you're expected to win the world's championship. And ultimately, we didn't get that done. How do you think, I mean, everybody expects you guys to draft a quarterback early. How do you think working with Andrew early in his NFL career will help you teach whoever that quarterback is? Well, I, I think it's important that you know, ultimately, between myself, of course, uh, Coach Jackson, and all of, all of the coaches on our offensive staff, uh, we just, you know, you have different reference points. You know, you, you kind of have an idea of, uh, of what to expect from a young quarterback early in his career in the National Football League. But um, I think to, to answer your question, I, I do feel like, you know, every quarterback is different. You know, and the plan for that kid, uh, for whoever it is that we have at quarterback, be it a veteran quarterback or a young quarterback, if we draft a quarterback, um, you have to have a plan that's specific for that quarterback. And uh, and I feel like, you know, I've over the years I've had an opportunity to uh, to not only watch Andrew grow, but some of the other quarterbacks that I've worked with uh, over the course of my career. Do you expect to? Uh be very active in, in the <coughs> scouting of the college quarterbacks? Um, I, you know, I think that's always been the case uh, with every franchise that I've been a part of. You know, you have um, an opportunity to evaluate guys and then share your opinion. But ultimately, it's, you know, it's not my decision to make. It's, it's my job to, uh, to help whoever we uh, decide to, to make our quarterback transition into a winning quarterback. Pep, would you expect to uh, attend pro days and, and oh, yes. do a lot of the interviews on the quarterback? Absolutely. Do you, have you, how much work have you done already on the top guys? Uh, not a ton. Uh, we're still working to, uh, to, to implement Coach Jackson's system here uh, with our coaches and, and get ourselves ready for uh, the start of the offseason program. But uh, we're slowly starting to transition to, uh, to preparing ourselves for the drafts. But, uh, for the draft, and um, and so we still, it's still, we still somewhat are in the early phases of that process. So when you go through this process, what are the characteristics that you see in, you know, in the quarterback? Uh, accuracy, is he a winner? And um, 
of course, you know, leadership qualities are really important to Coach Jackson and myself. So have you watched, um, have you watched any film yet on like a Carson Wentz or a Paxton Lynch or Jared Goffin? If, if so, what do you think of the top three or four quarterbacks in this draft? I haven't watched enough to have a strong opinion about any of those guys. Um, I had a chance to recruit uh, Jared uh, while I was at Stanford and, um, you know, I'm not surprised at all that, you know, he's one of the best quarterbacks of college football. What are your thoughts on, on the quarterbacks on the roster? Uh, I think that, you know, um, starting with McCown, uh, I've always loved having a veteran guy in the room uh, that has full credibility throughout the locker room. But, um, you know, he's, he's been productive over his career. You don't survive as long as he has in this league without having um, the skill set first and foremost and then having a work ethic and a character that um, that ultimately, you know, uh, would cause coaches and execs to feel comfortable enough to put the keys in your hand, hands in a sense, you know. So um, I feel good about Josh, feel good about uh, Austin, feel good about uh, all the guys that we have uh, on the roster currently. Um, and uh, and I'm excited to work with those guys. Is it Steph, have you guys discussed Possibility of having Josh Gordon next year? We have not. Who, who are your playmakers? Well, Benjamin, big time playmaker. Um, speed is off the chart. Um, you know, he's shown that, you know, he can, you know, get over top of coverages and, and he is a difference maker. You know, he's a guy that. Uh, if you get the ball in his hands and you give him space, he'll make something happen with the football. He'll score it. And uh, our tight end, Barnrich is, uh, am I saying it right? Yeah. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a special player. You know, tight ends have typically been the quarterback's best friend in Coach Jackson's offense. And, uh, and so we're excited to, uh, to see him continue to grow. And it was fun watching him uh, play in the Pro Bowl. And uh, Duke Johnson and Isaiah Crowell, those guys have been uh, very productive players for us and uh, for this franchise. And, and we expect that they'll take another step as we move forward. So uh, we, have, uh, we have plenty of playmakers on the perimeter, but I do feel like the strength of our offense is, uh, is the guys up front. You know? And like I said initially, I feel like uh, you know, our offense alignment in the style of offense that we expect to employ uh, we consider those guys to be playmakers because that, that's where it all starts. Is, is it a little unnerving then knowing you, a couple of those guys may not be there? I mean, you're talking about the strength of the offense and there's two guys that could potentially be gone here in, in four or five weeks. Yeah, but, you know, it is, and I try not to think about it. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I'm, I'm optimistic that things are going to work out. And uh, just looking at what, uh, they put on film, you know, over the course of their careers, you know, across the board, you know, those guys up front. Um, uh, it's exciting to see that the core, uh, the, the probably the most important component besides your quarterback of your offense is uh, we, we have a strong group in place. Do you think that you, need, do you like big receivers? I mean, all guys have big receivers, but you think you got big receivers really have to get, uh, you need bigger ones than you have now? Uh, not necessarily. I think that ultimately we just want guys that can score touchdowns. If you look at just some of the defensive trends over the past few years, you know, teams are starting to play a lot more man coverage. And, uh, you know, having guys that are elusive, quick, fast, uh, regardless of their size, that can uh, create separation and, and score the ball is, is what's most important for us in this offense. What is your, have you gone back and watched much of the, the tape from last year yet? Yeah, we have to so that we can evaluate the guys that are on the current roster. When you look at it, they moved the ball between the 20s most of the season. I, I don't know exactly where they finished in the red zone, but it wasn't very high. What did you see? What were they missing? And what do you have to get going forward to, to stop kicking field goals and start scoring touchdowns? Well, I don't know. I, didn't, I, I don't, when I go back and evaluate, when I went back to evaluate the guys that are on the team, I didn't watch the game in the actual order. You know, I, I more so watch cut up, so I don't have a strong opinion one way or another. Do you have an opinion on what you guys want to do with Cam Irving starting from April 4th? It seemed like he was everywhere as a rookie. Right. Well, I think uh, it's very beneficial for rookie offensive linemen to have an opportunity to play uh, at different spots across the, the, uh, across the line. 
Uh, I do feel like, um, you know, with the style of offense that we'll, we'll end up using, that there will be opportunities for us to put more than five offense alignment on the field. And I'm not saying that uh, Cam can, uh, uh, can't go in and compete and win a job, but um, it was good to see that there were times when, uh, when he was a, a dominant player. And uh, we expect that over time, the more that he plays and, and once he has a chance to work with the offensive line coaches that we have here, uh, he can be an every down player for us. I know you said he. Uh, I don't know yet. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I think it's a luxury to have a guy that can play tackle and or play center. Yeah. I know you said you. You don't want uh, to necessarily think of the offense as run first, but when you look at Isaiah and Duke, and I think that you know one of the things that have been talked about the last couple of years is you know the rotation and consistency. Are you are, are you of the philosophy that you have that that bell cow, that lead guy, with a complimentary back, or are you a hot hand type of guy, or? you just mix and match and, and rotate guys in. What is your philosophy when it comes to the approach to the running game and how you use your personnel? Well, way? I think because of the attrition in the National Football League, you have to have more than one guy. And uh, I, I feel strongly about the, um, the office line unit, like I just mentioned, and I, I do feel like our backs are very talented and uh, they can play without the ball. And I think Duke showed that last year. He had, what, 60-plus catches. Um, and uh, Isaiah can, can do anything that we're going to ask him to do. So uh, we'll ultimately need both guys, and we'll need someone else to step up as well. So we, uh, we'll find a way to, if a guy's hot, to get him the ball. But we're going to need all those guys to step in and make plays for us. Is it a drawback at all, personally, that she wants to call the plays? And do you understand his desire to keep doing that? No, it's not a drawback. You know, I just I want to win. <laughs> I want to win, win this division, get to the playoffs, and win some games, and ultimately, you know, hoist the Lombardi. I mean, that's what it's all about. Um, I, I personally, I don't feel like uh, it's not about me. I do know that for a fact. I, I do know that ultimately, in order for us to have a chance to be successful, uh, everybody has to be all in and and support each other, and ultimately support the head coach and. Uh, so I'm all I'm on board with whatever it is that coach wants to do. Why haven't you guys discussed Josh Gordon? Is it that he, since he's not reinstated yet, why why bother doing that at this point, or what what's the deal there? Well, I, I'm not I'm sure that you know Coach Jackson and Sashi and and uh, and Andrew Berry they've discussed Josh Gordon, but you know we hadn't really had a lot of discussions about personnel. You know, like I said, we're still in at the point where we're trying to get the offense in and and uh, get everybody on the same page from a terminology standpoint and get ourselves ready for the guys to uh, report back on April 4th. Well, let me be the first to ask, what about Manziel? How much of a discussion point is he? And that's, uh, that's something that Coach and, and Sashi, they've already addressed you know, above my pay grade.